Uh, good morning. I'm Azad Mashari. I'm one of the anesthesiologists at Toronto General. Uh, this session was actually curated by Dr. Massimiliano Maneri, who unfortunately couldn't join us live today. Uh, we will have his talk at the end of the session in recorded format. Our first speaker is Dr. Sarka Moravkova. Uh, Dr. Moravkova is a consultant cardiothoracic anesthesiologist at the Harefield Hospital, which is part of the N NHS uh, Trust of uh, Guys in St. Thomas. She will be giving us our introductory talk on the LV assessment, the basics. Dr. Moravkova. Good morning and afternoon. So I'll just uh, share my screen. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Azad, for a kind introduction and uh, invitation to participate, to participate in a, a Toronto Perioperative Symposium. I have uh, no financial disclosures. These are the objectives uh, for this talk, a left ventricle function and the basics. The quantification of uh, left ventricle uh, function, size, and geometry is important for evaluation of uh, and management of patients with a heart disease. And we know that uh, left ventricle ejection fraction is associated with uh, high mortality. Uh, in, um, uh, in this uh, paper uh, published in 2020, Ankaran and colleagues showed uh, that the rate of mortality and hospitalization increases in direct proportion with the reduction in the left ventricle ejection fraction for both cardiac and non-cardiac causes uh, of hospitalization. So what's the function of the heart? The function of the heart is to provide adequate cardiac output uh, and it's product of stroke volume and the heart rate. The left ventricle performance uh, depends on preload, which is a diastolic issue, afterload, uh, which is a systolic issue, myocardial contractility, and uh, presence of regional contractile variations. We can uh, measure stroke volume uh, by echo uh, using integration of uh, velocity time interval in um, LVOT or uh, aortic valve and uh, calculating the cross section of the area where the VTI uh, was measured. Left ventricle is uh, located posterior uh, to the right ventricle. It is a cone or bullet shaped, uh, where it long axis is directed from apex to the base. Uh, so it has a basal uh, part, mid portion, and the apex. Uh, the apex of the normal size heart project into the fifth intercostal space uh, near mid clavicular line. Um, it has or is made up uh, of an inlet portion, apical trabecula, and outlet portion. Left ventricle muscle is a complex structure and uh, it has been uh, uh, studied uh, in, the, in, a, in a, a many papers. Uh, it's uh, arranged in layers and the Francesco Torres uh, gasp showed that the ventricular myocardium can be unwrapped into a, a single muscular uh, myocardial band and the band um, extends from the pulmonary artery to aorta and in the middle performs a 180 degree twist. According to the fibers orientation, there are three, three layers. Um, in sub uh, epicardial location, uh, the fibers are oriented with left-handed helix. In sub endocardial location, it is a right-handed helix and uh, the mid layer has circumferential orientation. The circumferential fibers uh, decrease the minor axis and the oblique fibers, the longitudinal axis.
The mathematical models uh, which studied the function of the left ventricle show that uh, um, this uh, counter-directional orientation of fibers is uh, energetically efficient and necessary for the uniform um, function of the myocardium and distribution of the stress on the heart. The helical uh, arrangement causes twisting and uh, twisting in systole and untwisting in a, in a diastole with a suction effect. So these are diagrams of the myocardial motion uh, we can actually uh, visually appreciate. The longitudinal contraction, radial contraction, and circumferential contraction. Here is uh, a video from the operating room. Uh, the apex of the heart is lifted and you can appreciate its uh, twisting motion. Uh, now observe the longitudinal and radial function of the left ventricle on uh, transesophageal echo images. Also, hopefully you can see the uh, circumferential sliding of the epicardium in the uh, left left sided uh, image. So during uh, systole, uh, the atrioventricular ring distance towards the apex and the velocity of the myocardial base uh, is higher than in, uh, in the base is higher than in the apical parts of the left ventricle. And we can measure the velocity of the myocardium uh, using tissue Doppler. So by placing a pulse wave Doppler in lateral or septal mitral valve annulus, the tissue Doppler signal must be well aligned with the vector of the velocity it's a, a simple method and easy to obtain. Um, uh, the, the reduced myocardial velocity indicates impaired systolic function. Values below seven and a half centimeters per second are considered abnormal. When the left ventricle loses its longitudinal shortening, uh, it starts uh, remodeling into the more stospherical shape. The left ventricle uh, can be imaged by uh, transesophageal echo in several standard views. I will go very quickly through them. So starting from uh, mid-esophageal four-chamber view, uh, visualizes a left ventricle, anterolateral and inferoceptal uh, walls. Uh, uh, moving the, the beam of the ultrasound to 90 degrees, uh, visualizing uh, mid-esophageal two-chamber view with inferior and anterior walls and rotating the ultrasound beam further towards 120, 130 degrees can uh, visualize inflow and outflow of the left ventricle and inferolateral and anteroceptal walls. By pushing the probe further uh, in into the stomach, we can uh, visualize the base of the uh, of, uh, left ventricle by which transgastric basal short axis view and uh, pushing the probe further in or uh, unflexing uh, the tip, we can uh, see a short axis mid papillary view and further unflexing in this, uh, in this view, we can uh, see more apical, apical parts of the left ventricle. From the mid uh, uh, papillary uh, view, rotating the beam to 90 degrees, you can see a uh, transgastric two chamber views with inferior and anterior walls. So the left ventricle dysfunction is associated uh, with changes in the ventricular shape, size, and wall thickness. Uh, the left ventricle enlargement is associated with altered geometry where left ventricle loses its cylindrical shape and becomes more spherical. And the spheric enlargement then causes tethering of mitral leaflets and the mitral regurgitation. So it's also important to look uh, for a wall characteristics, wall integrity and texture. And intercavital blood flow has a typical low flow characteristic in severely impaired uh, left ventricle. The ASC uh, recommends measuring a left ventricle dimensions, wall thickness, and left ventricle volumes. 
So starting with the linear dimensions, the left ventricle dimension and wall thickness can be measured in transesophageal echo in transgastric mean papillary view with uh, using the M mode, measuring the left ventricle and diastolic diameter and left ventricle and systolic diameter. Uh, here are the upper normal limits. So for left ventricle and diastolic diameter for men is 58 millimeters, for women it's 52 millimeters and the wall thickness, the normal wall thickness is between six to 10 millimeters. The dimensions can be also measured using a 2D echo uh, in a transgastric uh, two chamber view where the measurement is placed just above the uh, papillary muscles. Left ventricular dysfunction is often associated with abnormal wall thickness. There is a complex formula calculated in left ventricle mass. Uh, fortunately, this, can, this is done for us by, uh, by the machine. Basically, it's calculating the myocardial volume. Uh, it's important for a monitoring of patients with uh, hypertension and in perioperative setting, it has, uh, has a limited clinical applications. The ASC recommends to comment on left ventricle geometry. Uh, so two types of left ventricle hypertrophy are recognized, uh, eccentric and uh, concentric. The eccentric, the left ventricle chamber enlarges proportionally with the uh, increasing wall hypertrophy. And the concentric, the, the chamber size uh, remains uh, normal, but the wall thickness increases. The relative wall thickness um, helps distinguish between concentric and eccentric uh, 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 hypertrophy and concentric remodeling. Uh, it's defined as a two times inferior wall thickness divided by the left ventricle diastolic diameter. And it is a marker for adverse events in a patients with left ventricle dysfunction. Uh, the normal values are uh, 0.32 to 0.42, and they are not dependent on gender or uh, body size. So these are a uh, normal T 2D echo parameters published uh, by ASC and ESCVI uh, in 2015. Uh, the measurements uh, are derived from uh, transthoracic echo. Uh, so the uh, cutoff uh, parameters for uh, left ventricle and diastolic diameter, as I said, 58 millimeters for men, 52 for uh, women. The end diastolic uh, uh, volume is 74. Uh, it, it should be indexed for a body uh, a surface area. And uh, for men, it is 74 uh, uh, milliliters per uh, meter square for men is 61. Uh, uh, left ventricle and systolic volume for men is uh, 31, uh, the cutoff uh, uh, cut value 31 mils per uh, meter square for uh, women 24, and the uh, uh, lower uh, number for the normal uh, left ventricle ejection fraction, 52% uh, for a man and 54% for a women. So based on the assumption that the left ventricle cavity can be uh, divided in the stack of elliptical discs, uh, which they vary in diameter based on the shape of the left ventricle, the computer software uh, calculates the volume of each disc and summates it and give us the total left ventricle volume. The measurements are performed in two orthogonal views. It is the mid-esophageal four-chamber view and mid-esophageal two-chamber view. And uh, we can use automated uh, endocardial border recognition. The problems uh, during this measurement is that uh, very often the left ventricle is foreshortening, so it doesn't show the true um, LV apex, which then leads uh, to underestimation of left ventricle volumes. And because it's usually more affects uh, left ventricle um, and systolic volumes, the um, ejection fraction, which is calculated from here, is then overestimated. The other problem is that the endocardial borders may not be, be uh, well visualized. So for quantitative assessment of global systolic left ventricle function, the 
ASC recommends uh, measuring ejection fraction, fraction area change, and global longitudinal strain. The ASC recommends using a modified uh, Simpson method of disk, so the biplane disk summation for uh, measuring of ejection fraction. The ejection fraction is derived from the uh, end diastolic volume and end systolic volume measured uh, as showed earlier. And it is a relation between the amount of blood which is expelled during each cardiac cycle or stroke volume relative to, to the size of the left ventricle. So the normal lower value as said before for men 52% for uh, women 54% are considered uh, below this number considered abnormal. So the problems to avoid uh, during these measurements apart uh, from the foreshortening of the left ventricle is, is also important that the, uh, the LV length uh, is perpendicular to the, uh, to the base width. Uh, if you look on the uh, picture on the screen, um, the, the part which is uh, the, on the lateral, um, around the lateral uh, mitral annulus is not included in the measurements and uh, the uh, uh, volumes will be underestimated. The, uh, the other important thing while tracing the endocardium is to um, concentrate on the compact part of the uh, myocardium, not on the, the, the soft part and uh, not to include uh, papillary muscles or uh, trabeculation in, uh, uh, in the border. And I think it's important to also uh, always include the, your visual assessment as there, as there are bit to bit variations uh, during, uh, even in the systolic uh, rhythm. Fraction area change is measured uh, in transgastric mid papillary uh, view, tracing the endocardial border in uh, end systole and end diastole. Uh, the, uh, the problems here can be that the endocardial borders of lateral septal walls are often not well distinguished. And um, uh, because they are parallel to the ultrasound beam, but it is very quick to perform. Uh, there are no issues with the foreshortening of the left ventricle. Uh, but uh, it's, it's only measurement in one plane and it doesn't account for the rest of the ventricle. Uh, it's highly uh, loading dependent. So um, relates to the preload and afterload. And it's usually about 10% uh, uh, less uh, value than the left ventricle ejection fraction. So normally it's between 40 to 60%. But in the perioperative setting, it's useful because it's, um, uh, it's very quickly uh, to perform and easy. And it can give us um, uh, scenarios uh, for different uh, clinical hemodynamic scenarios and evaluation of the status. So global uh, longitudinal strain uh, is obtained uh, with speckle tracking, but also with a tissue Doppler. Uh, it's basically a relative uh, length change of uh, left ventricle myocardium be between end diastole and end systole. It's a measurement of the global systolic function using three standard views. And then the average, the normal value is above uh, minus 18%. Uh, these pictures are from a uh, Philips machine using uh, Tomtech software. Uh, it is easy to, easy to measure. Uh, another uh, measurement of uh, a myocardial function, which is not in a recommendation, but I, can, I find it quite useful, is uh, the PDT measurement, which is uh, measuring the uh, uh, isovolumetric contraction uh, of the left ventricle. Uh, it also has uh, several uh, issues. One is that you can only measure it if you have a good uh, quality signal of mitral regurgitation. 
uh, uh, also if there's any conduction issues, they can decrease the value of uh, DPDT. The value below uh, 500 indicates a severe dysfunction. During operative uh, procedure, um, it's, it's common not to have time to perform complex calculations uh, and measurements, and therefore eyeballing assessment by experience of a cardiographer is essential. There are several papers which showed a good correlation between eyeballing and quantitative measurements, though uh, it is not recommended as a sole method of evaluation of the left ventricle. So for the assessment of the regional left ventricle function, the ventricle is divided into segments reflecting coronary perfusion. Commonly used is a 17 segment model. The regional wall motion is assessed on the basis of observed myocardial wall thickening and the inward movement of the endocardium. The easiest and uh, quick, quickest method is eyeballing, and there is a semi-quantitative method of a wall motion score index given, which gives the each segment a point depending on the motion. So uh, one point is for the normal kinetic ventricle. So the uh, then it is the uh, sum is divided by a number of segments. Uh, so the score of one correlates with a good LV ejection fraction and the, uh, the index score of three with a uh, very poor uh, uh, ventricle. And a quantitative assessment by tissue Doppler or speckle tracking. Bear in mind that uh, there can be also uh, non-ischemic causes of regional wall movement abnormalities such as pacing or conductive tissues. Uh, or interference uh, or interaction of the, uh, between the ventricle uh, or uh, uh, compression uh, by effusion or pericardial constriction. So the systolic function is uh, sort of more intuitive to understand. Uh, after systole, myocardial mass relax and refill uh, with the blood. There, so the systole is an important uh, aspect of left ventricle function. The driving force for ventricular filling is the left atrial to left ventricle pressure gradient. There are comprehensive uh, grading algorithms to uh, evaluate diastolic function. These can be quite consuming to obtain, uh, especially in, uh, uh, in theater. Uh, and also it is unusual for uh, all parameters to be in agreement, making it hard to grade a diastolic function in uh, individual patient. So the diastolic assessment uh, starts with uh, 2D characteristics, a patient with uh, uh, left ventricle hypertrophy, increased uh, left ventricle mass, uh, increased left atrial size and volume will often have uh, a degree of diastolic dysfunction. The left atrial volume uh, higher than 34 mils per um, meter square of body, body surface area measured by transthoracic echo is a predictor uh, of an increased uh, mortality and morbidity in patients which uh, don't have um, uh, atrial fibrillation or valvular heart disease. In transesophageal echo, um, the left atrium uh, measurements uh, can be done in a, a four-chamber uh, metasophageal view. Uh, the studies show that there is a good correlation, but consistently um, showing a lower values by average about uh, 10 uh, milliliters. 
So the ventricular filling depends on left atrial, left ventricle pressure gradient, uh, which also determines the diastolic velocity profile across uh, the mitral valve. So according to the recommendation uh, published in 2016, uh, the quantitative uh, information on left diastolic function includes uh, at least transmetral uh, EQA ratio and E-velocity deceleration time, E-prime velocity, which either average or the absolute values for septal lateral side of the mitral annulus using a pulse tissue Doppler, E2 uh, e, e to E-prime ratio, uh, and the estimation of a systolic a pulmonary artery pressures derived from a tricuspid regurgitation velocity. These are the uh, sort of cutoff for uh, a severe uh, diastolic dysfunction. Uh, in uh, thoracic surgery uh, journal in 2011, uh, Schwaminathan and uh, colleagues uh, published a study where they um, tried to assess a utility of ASC uh, algorithm uh, for measuring the diastolic function in a perioperative period. And they found that they could only um, uh, assess or grade two, two thirds uh, patients. Uh, so they uh, also used a simplified algorithm uh, using only two variables. Uh, and that's a measurement, starting with a measurement of uh, lateral annulus velocity E prime, uh, if it is below 10 centimeters per second, then they uh, uh, graded the diastolic dysfunction according uh, to the E to E prime ratio and uh, find out that it was um, uh, easy, easy to perform and uh, were able to grade majority of the patients. So these are the summaries of uh, 2D echo uh, disadvantages and limitations. So 2D echo uh, is uh, dependent on a geometric assumption. Uh, it is not accurate if the ventricles are distorted and have uh, regional wall movement abnormalities. Uh, uh, a way of the, uh, of the views where we are using for measurement uh, there also might not be uh, adequate endocardial border definition. Uh, the left ventricle uh, views need to be centered and on axis uh, and be aware of foreshortening. And the true apex is uh, often not visualized even if there is a good uh, quality image. And the Doppler measurement uh, needs to be aligned with the flow or vector of velocity. Thank you.